Bookcase TV is brought to you in part by Cafe Tallulah. Digital Film Academy. Welcome back to a new episode of Bookcase TV. Uh, since we've started doing our investigation uh, for the last few years, uh, we've been getting a lot of requests from isolated people, and I, these isolated people are always self-published authors. So who are they? How do they make it in this world? They've been tremendous... Excuse me. Yes? No, I'm actually just talking about the topic. I'm just talking about your book. Yes, I will promise I will help you publish your book. Okay, thank you. This is exactly what's happening all the time. I start talking and I'm being distracted by self-published authors. How do they get attention? How can they sell the book? There's been tremendous successful story online, but for the majority of self-published authors, it's not the case, and they have to really make use of all social media and all the outlets to sell their book. So we decided to send our most faithful favorite investigator to give a chance and give a voice to books we thought were really worthy of your attention. So my guest is Grant Harper Reed and his book Rhythms for Sale. A uh, pretty fascinating book about uh, the Harlem Renaissance and uh, it deals with something you actually are very surprised. You learned pretty late in your life that it's about your grandfather. Yes. Yes. And his name was uh, Leonard, Leonard Harper. Harper. Yes. And uh, how, did you get start how did you discover? I was doing research on myself, on my work as locations, mm -hmm. and uh, I went to the County Cullen Library. As I walked out, I saw a Harlem Renaissance book. And I opened it up, and they spelled my grandfather's name wrong, Leon. And I asked the uh, librarian about the, the paragraph. And on the bottom, it said BB. And he said that BB means blacks in black face. Go around the corner to the Schomburg. And I found eight pages. And I found a little bit more in the books. But not till I went to a lady's house, a former dancer wow. from, in the village, and I just started asking her questions. She says, oh, yeah, I, I used to work for your grandfather. She says, you're going to find about your grandfather in the old newspapers, like in the Chicago, Pittsburgh, Korea, Amsterdam News. She said they wrote about Harlem and your grandfather. So it, it put a few pieces together. So Rhythm for Cell is a result of this uh, investigation. That's, uh, yeah. We can call it an investigation. Mm -hmm. Discovery of your grandfather, yeah. retracing it, collecting information. Um, how long was the whole process? It took me over 30 years, really. 30 years? Yeah. How did you, start, how did you get started? I mean, first, you, you went to Pittsburgh, you went to Chicago, no, or I did it, microfiche. Okay, microfiche. Okay. In the Schomburg, a lot okay. of it. I wanted to give a true depiction of what it was before the Harlem Renaissance and during the Harlem Renaissance, mm -hmm. and the after, a little bit after the Harlem Renaissance. Mm -hmm. So, who was your grandfather? He was a poor boy in Alabama okay. who enjoyed, and he had a special gift of entertainment. He first started dancing. He got married. They went to London, and he came back in the middle of the Harlem Renaissance, and he became the centerpiece of the Harlem Renaissance. He produced thousands and thousands of shows outside of Connie's Inn, the Cotton Club, the Lafayette Theater, and then he went to Chicago later, and he produced for Al Capone's. Al Capone had a version of the Cotton Club, and he produced for Al Capone's version of the Cotton Club. Then he came back and opened up to Chicago. To place the audience, we're talking about like, the 20s and the 30s mainly, right? Yes. right? Okay. You make it sound like a fairy tale. So the poor guy comes to, uh, to New York and he conquers the world, but the progression is, the reality is, is, is doesn't, f there's a lot of friction. Yeah. Yes? It's like, a, I would say, a fairy tale and a nightmare. He had a lot of problems when he went to London. Well, for being black or what sort of problems? Partly about? for being black okay. and partly for being American. When my grandfather came back, the policies in Harlem for the shows were not what they are today. They would rarely let the black people come inside and sit, you know. And do whatever they want? Yeah. Or, or is it more, less structured? Do you, I'm not sure I understand that. Well, because of the racial prejudice was so blatant back then, that if, if they let blacks in the clubs, oh, they would have to sit by the toilet area okay. or the kitchen. 
Did your grandfather leave any diaries or with um, he left letters letters to to my grandmother? To my, okay, and she, but, you had access to those. Yes, I did. Every Christmas here in New York, we have the rockets. Yeah, mm -hmm. but back then he had the, the operettes. Is that what you call them? Yes. So what, what was it? So a group of women dancing on his, on his behalf. I saw the little clip you sent me. Yes. There. Now, where did you find those clips? You... I found that from the movie The Exile. Okay. And that was actually executive produced by Frank Schiffman, who owned the Lafayette Theater. He owned the Lincoln Theater. Okay. And he owned the Apollo. And he came in to help Oscar Michaud because Oscar Michaud was, didn't have the proper funding. Mm. And it was the first all-black talkie and it was filmed in the Metropolitan Studios in Fort Lee, New Jersey. And he always, Michelle wanted, always wanted my grandfather involved because he figured if my grandfather's chorus girls and his hit shows would bring in bigger audiences. So they were able to get the money to hire my grandfather because his close association with Frank Schiffman as well. Mm -hmm. And that's how they got those nightclub scenes. You, were you surprised to make all these discoveries? How? prolific and yeah. huge he was back in his days? It took over my life. Yeah. And what do you think you've learned about yourself through the process? It was my destiny to learn about him because I always wanted to get into show business. You know, my grandmother was trying to keep me out of it. She wanted to be me to be a minister or a politician. And some could argue that's show business in another way, you know what I mean? Sure, it's the so, same, yeah. It's yeah. performance. Yeah, it? performance. <laughs> so you decided to publish this on your own, or you try very hard to get it published and it didn't, well, actually, didn't succeed? Well, actually, while I was doing the research, um, one of my friends from school, her father was an attorney, and we got money people and we tried to mount it as a production while I was doing, while I had finished the research. Mm -hmm. So I came up with a basic work, which was a rough version of the book. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't particularly corroborated because it was for uh, writers and directors to use. And that didn't work out. But just before that didn't work out, I started, I said to myself, I'm going to come out with a book. So uh, what sort of a reaction are you getting from people? Uh, very positive. Very positive, yeah. Very positive.